On September 14th, the United States and Russia reached a last-minute deal, giving U.S. President Barack Obama a graceful way to back down from his threat to take military action against Syria with or without congressional approval. But many questions remain about logistics and whether this plan can bring the international community closer to a political solution to end the bloodshed in Syria. The agreement between U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov creates a framework for the destruction of Syria's chemical weapons. As a concession to the Russians, an initial U.N. resolution will omit any threat of an attack on Syria for noncompliance. The world will now expect the Assad regime to live up to its public commitments. And as I said at the outset of these negotiations, there can be no games, no room for avoidance, or anything less than full compliance by the Assad regime. The deal calls on the Syrian government to submit a full inventory of its chemical weapons, including their types, quantities, and locations, and for international inspectors to be in Syria by November to verify compliance by the end of that month. All of Syria's chemical weapons stockpile, material, and equipment must be destroyed or put under international control by mid-2014. As I think you've heard, there were countries that were ready to pay for the war, and I'm sure there will be countries, perhaps not the same countries, that will be ready to finance the peaceful solution to the problem. Obama administration officials said the president was open to a U.N. Security Council resolution that did not threaten military force if Syria fails to meet the agreement's terms. To ensure the Syrian government doesn't mistake this for weakness, Kerry said military action was still an option. The threat of force is real, and the Assad regime and all those taking part need to understand that President Obama and the United States are committed to achieve this goal. We cannot have hollow words in the conduct of international affairs because that affects all other issues, whether Iran or North Korea or any other. The French agree. French President Francois Hollande told his countrymen that a military option must remain on the table. We could put a resolution up for a vote at the UN Security Council by the end of the week. Would that mean that we would be done with this issue? There's still violence in Syria. There's still a war raging. The next step will be to find a political solution to the crisis in Syria. As the UN Security Council gets ready to vote on the proposed agreement, UN weapons inspectors also released their official findings about last month's chemical weapons attack that killed hundreds of people in Ghouta, a Damascus suburb. The inspectors reported that rockets with warheads loaded with sarin nerve gas were used on a large scale but did not reach any conclusions about who was responsible for launching those rockets. There must be accountability for the use of chemical weapons. Any use of chemical weapons by anyone, anywhere, is a crime. But our message today must be more than that. Do not slaughter your people with gas. There must be also no impunity for the crimes being committed with conventional weapons. Meanwhile, the violence continued in Syria this week as amateur video distributed by Syrian activists showed attacks being carried out near Damascus by both pro-government forces and anti-Assad rebels.